Local Sky News coverage, Prince Charles arrived on a mobile throne to see if he could king canute the water away, but only managed to star in a depressing repeat of the 2012 Thames pageant. That's the kind of thing that's been going on, but we start with the Winter Olympics, an event that's going to be almost unbearably exciting if, like me, you find mankind's ability to slide on ice inherently fascinating. This year's snowy games are being held in Russia, home of one-man charm offensive Vladimir Putin, that the games have run into controversy before they've even begun. Given recent terrorist incidents, security is obviously a prime concern, but the reported $50 billion cost is also problematic. Another stumbling block is Russia's attitude towards gay people. You'd think Russia would be accepting of homosexuality given one of their national heroes, Tchaikovsky, was homosexual himself, and also Red Square's so camp it looks like an even gayer Disneyland. As recently as 2008, Russia won the Gay Olympics, i.e. Eurovision, leading to triumphant and inspiring scenes as their gold medalist figure skating champion Yevgeny Plushenka joined Russell Howard in a black wig lookalike Dima Bilan on stage in a routine that incredibly, and indeed impossibly, made the Eurovision Song Contest look ten times gayer than it is. But now Russia's passed an anti-gay propaganda bill which controversially links homosexuality with paedophilia, thus playing into extremist prejudices. This in a country where authorities are already accused of turning a blind eye to shocking neo-Nazi attacks on suspected gay people. Thanks to the bill, the notoriously tough Russian cops must now arrest anyone who's promoting homosexuality. And it's not clear what that means. Does it mean, for instance, anyone wearing a uniform with the word homo printed backwards on it? I mean, presumably they'll definitely be rounding up the butch hunks of Russia's own interior ministry because they recently uploaded a very camp YouTube video in which they don uniforms and perform a popular disco hit, just like the village people. She's up all night to the sun. I'm up all night to get sun. She's up all night for good fun. I'm up all night to get lucky. Of course, in Russia, a gay person's considered to have got lucky at the end of the night if they made it home alive. Depressingly, lots of Russians seem to think paedophiles and homosexuals are the same thing. In worrying scenes, ITN caught up with the none-too-bright leader of an anti-gay vigilante group who's essentially a Russian Philomena Kunk. Based on my personal statistics, 80% of paedophiles we catch are homosexuals. Personal statistics? I think that's a complex numerological term for numbers you've just pulled out of your ass. Channel 4 News caught up with one of the anti-gay law's authors, a sort of ginger David Brent with a curiously small office. Seriously, it looks like he's stuck in some sort of closet. Captain Hate here is convinced gays are after children. Why do they need our minors? Why, why cannot you survive just having your same-sex friend, having your common disease, together with him venereal disease or AIDS, and to live with him? Well, you know what? I assumed this guy would be intolerant, but when you actually hear him lay out his case like this, he's really quite insane. One man who definitely won't be falling foul of any anti-gay law is President Vladimir Putin, who, as the eye-opening blanket coverage comprehensively proves, is 100% straight. He's a one-man heterosexual mega-bloke. Repeatedly pictured in thrilling scenes, shooting his bolt, gripping his joystick, enjoying a ride with some leather men, practising his disco hustle, stretching his pelvis, picking up a man and tossing him off, riding bareback with some cowpokes, getting stuck into a cockpit with his helmet all popping out the top, fisting an entire male hockey team, Team and squeezing right up behind a young man holding on tight and shooting all the way up the pipe. They don't get straighter than him. Look, he's only kissing this fish because it's a woman. Whoa. Putin's Winter Games are now on a collision course with the anti-gay propaganda law, and it's not hard to see why. I mean, just look at the double luge, which, as you can tell from this forensic, dazzling and exciting coverage, is possibly the only sport in the world where two men could comfortably have anal sex in front of an audience without anyone really noticing. And they get to have a nice lie down and a tender cuddle. Oh... Russia has no openly gay athletes, a ridiculously outmoded state of affairs, a bit like Britain in the 1920s or the Premier League today. But will gay athletes from overseas be welcome at the Sochi Olympics? Well, the mayor of Sochi did his best to allay concerns by announcing there's no homophobia at all in Sochi, but only because there's no gay people at all in Sochi. We don't have them in our town. We don't have them in the town. You sure? I'm not sure. I don't bloody know them. I went to a gay bar last night. Oh, hello. You're in there. The mixed messages about what sort of reception gays can expect continued in these unusual scenes when President Putin sat down with a bunch of Olympic volunteers dressed like a gay Cirque du Soleil to say homosexuals are welcome to visit the Games if, if they can leave kids alone. That's why you can feel free, relaxed, but leave children in peace, please. But if you're heterosexual, feel free to bother them.
This kind of statement led to further negative headlines for Russia, so to calm nerves, Putin held a charming journalistic coffee morning to answer questions on gay rights. Questions like whether homosexuality is a lifestyle decision or just the way you're born. That is beyond my professional interest. I'm just not qualified to respond. Yeah, he leaves those sorts of questions to his chief eugenics officer. Putin went on to claim that some of his best friends are homosexual and went out of his way to praise famous gay man Elton John. For example, Elton John is an extraordinary person a distinguished musician, and millions of our people sincerely love him, regardless of his sexual orientation. Now well, that's nice to know, although I'm not sure they're entirely aware what his sexual orientation is. I mean, on one of his most high-profile visits to Russia in the sumptuous Nikita video, he seemed to find romance with a very female Russian doll. Nikita, never know. Maybe he's just the sort of gay guy they like, the sort that falls in love with women. But he is very well known there. I mean, I bet if Elton John walked through Moscow holding hands with his partner today, they'd be mobbed and beaten. Not that Russia needs Elton John anyway. As you can see from this inspiring coverage, Putin can tickle the ivories just as well. Anyway, the games are now incredibly close, and despite all the brickbats, Putin hopes they'll cause a shift in the way Russia's perceived by the rest of the world, and he's right, they have already. It used to be viewed as a corrupt, mafia-dominated state. Now it's seen as a homophobic ski resort. <laughs>